it's Leanna and Jared. We're back for week two of best of best of crew in the house. <laughs> um, so this is such a fun episode with Jamie Wood from F Boy Island, which was on HBO Max. It was like so cool that we got him on the show. Yeah. And like um, this is one of the interviews where I was like, I don't know if I'm excited for this. And then he was such a deep dude. I think about his. <laughs> you think about him all the time. <laughs> I do. I think about him every day, usually in the shower. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> I think about his his definition of toxicity all yeah. the time. And yeah. I think I've mentioned it like a few times on the show. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. really it's a great episode. And I so it's funny. Last week we were talking about how you were crushing on Dr. Frederick. I totally slid into Jamie's DMs like multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, enjoy this episode and uh, we'll see you next week for our next best of. What I said was that toxic is is really like pain. It's like it's like venom. It's like pain leaving someone and it's experienced by other people in various ways. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Hello and Goodbye. I'm Liana. I am Jared. And oh, my goodness, I'm excited for today. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> this was such a fun episode uh, to record with Jamie Wood from F Boy Island. Yes. It is like my new favorite reality show on mm -hmm. HBO Max. Um, and I think we do go through the premise with Jamie a little bit, but maybe we could kind of give you guys like a quick synopsis. Um, so basically, you should watch it. So you might, you might, there's a, a spoiler alerts. It's like, you're going to find out how everything like. Yes. If you up. don't want it spoiled, go watch all 10 episodes right now <laughs> and then turn this podcast on. Cause yeah. it's really good. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah. And the interview is great. Jamie's great. So, um, basically it's three, no, I'm sorry. Three girls go to some island and 24 guys show up 12 of them are self-proclaimed fuck boys 12 of them are self-proclaimed nice guys mm -hmm. and of course it is self-proclamation so sure. you know who knows what it's actually um and they try and win the hearts of the women and yeah. it's kind of like uh who's gonna win the the nice guy or the fuck boy yeah and that's kind of the whole premise nikki glazer is the host she's a comedian she's absolutely hilarious yep. love her on this show and um yeah it's just it's really like a couple of you have reached out because we um, I told you guys to watch it like a couple episodes ago and you're like, I'm hooked. This is amazing. I'm like, just finish it by Wednesday. Just finish it by <laughs> Wednesday. So anyway, um, yeah, so I would highly recommend it and it's just good TV. It's just good reality TV. It's a fun watch and it's also like you see, when we talk about this in the interview with Jamie, you see the people on the show growing and changing yes. and that's kind of cool yeah so it's not like totally trash 100%. like there's a heart to it right yeah, yeah yeah it's one of the reasons why i like too hot to handle too mm -hmm. because it's like it's not just you're not just watching people just wanting to have sex and party you're like i mean that's what they're there that's what they show up for yeah. but like you actually watch them like grow as humans and um it was actually really it was really neat to get jamie's perspective on everything that happened with him being on the show and, and you know, um, his experience on the show as well, because we don't, you don't, you only get to see what the producers are going to show you. Yes. Right. And so there was so much that we didn't get to see that you get to hear about from Jamie. Yeah. And low key, I have a crush on Jamie. Yeah. I almost called you out. Like I well, like, I almost called you out when we were interviewing him, but not, but like to try to be like a wingman to you. you know, <laughs> like, to be like, let me just call this out and like see see how his response is, and mm -hmm. then you two can kind yeah. of laugh about it. And yeah, you know, no, I like, see I slid into go. Jamie's DMs. Oh, how did it go? It's okay. I mean, I, I mean, we live, you know, very far apart. Yes, that's true. And and I 
don't know if he's dating someone or seeing yeah. someone. I don't want to be too, you know, like, Jamie, if you're listening to this, I hope yeah. this isn't weird for you. But. I kind of want to <laughs> slide into his DMs in, like, a bromance kind of way. I feel like Ooh, we vibe. Should. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, if anything. I'd be like, bro, do you want to start a men's group together? Like, I mean, honestly, <laughs> like, if anything, like, let's just be friends. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So anyway, so we're excited to get you guys to the interview. So yes. we'll, we'll, you know, keep our conversation short, but hang out Absolutely. with us for a little bit. Quick housekeeping, subscribe to our Patreon, help support the show, patreon.com slash hello and goodbye podcast. It's three bucks a month. It just helps us cover costs and yes. helps the show grow. So um, the other thing you can do is visit our sponsors. We can go to our website, www.helloandgoodbyepodcast.com. We have sponsors. We have um, Hello Tushy. We have a sponsorship with V Fresh and with Ioba Toys. So head over there. You can purchase product from them. All of the discount codes and everything is there on the website. Yes. And if you if you have someone in your life that needs a gift, a tushy bidet is a great one. They're, if it's a woman that you're like really close friends with, an Ioba toy, also a great gift. 100%. Maybe the V-Fresh product's not something you want to get someone. <laughs> for your partner. You for, your for your partner, yeah. yeah you know someone partner. who has UTIs. And yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. men can take the, the V-Track too. Oh, that's true. Yeah, for healthy bladder function. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's almost like you've read that on a website somewhere. <laughs> Um, by the way, if you're environmentally conscious, you should get a bidet. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So you go to hellotushy.com slash hello and goodbye. Yeah. And if you care about your butthole, you should get a bidet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> care about the environment? Care about your butthole. Get a tushy bidet. There you go. <laughs> okay. And then last thing is please share this episode. So share the episodes, share with your friends, go to Apple Podcasts rate and review for us. The more reviews and ratings that we get, the more Apple is going to share our podcast with other people who aren't necessarily looking for it. Mm -hmm. So if you guys can just do us a solid, head over there, it takes one minute, you just search hello and goodbye, scroll down, hit the five stars, five stars only. If you want to hit less, <laughs> that's not welcomed. <laughs> Send us a DM. We'll take that instead. Yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, anything you do helps the show grow. And we and we need your help. So we're asking you for your help in any of these three areas. And we really just appreciate and love y'all. Yeah. Okay. What's happening with you? Not much. Um, I have had some really good therapy sessions mm. lately. Like two weeks ago, my therapist, like at the very end of like this very like deep conversation, he was like, you really want to be found. And I was like, yes. Like, and I was like, even by myself, you mm. know? And then he was like, I feel like this is the most important thing in the world to you. And I was like, this is the most important thing in the world to me. Aww. It was like very like sort of mind blowing. Yeah, it was cool. Um, the other <laughs> the funny thing that happened in my life is my sister texted me like four or five days ago and was like, Jared, Matt, and that, that's her husband. She was like, Matt and I have been watching this show called Married at First Sight. Oh, yeah. Have you ever seen it? We think you should go on. And my sister was like, I really, she and she was like, I looked it up and they're shooting in Boston. So that's, that won't work for like the next season. But like, blah, 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 blah. She was like very invested Actually, in me going Actually, I could see on you there. on a reality show. Oh, uh, I don't know. For sure. I don't want to be, I would go on Survivor, which is a show that I no. low-key love. But I don't want to be on something where I'm like courting women. Why? I would be, I would, that would, that would feel so vulnerable and embarrassing to me. To think of like all of my friends from college, like see me trying to like woo somebody. I mean, that's kind of what you do on this podcast. But I'm not like. But you're not doing it. I see. You're not doing it like actively, like with everybody like, watching. Oh, like I'm trying to be charming and flirty and like, you know, like. Ugh. I would, I would do reality show, like a reality TV show. Uh, casting agents. <laughs> Yeah, y'all, if you want to nominate, up. nominate me, I don't know. I, I, I feel like nowadays, like, I don't know that I have the, I mean, I, I am very confident in my body. I'm very confident in who I am, but I feel like with like the bachelor franchise and other things, like you have to be like a size two, like it's crazy. Like yeah. it's, you know, they won't even look at you if you're like, I'm a size 10 yeah. and I'm healthy and I work out and I eat healthy and they wouldn't even look at me. Yeah, and I, I think that's true. I mean, I actually feel some of that same 
like a sort of self-consciousness like like as a dude like i'm like i am in really good shape especially for a guy my age and it's i value being healthy and that i'm still flexible and i did a triathlon and did all these things Mm -hmm. but like i don't have like the big muscles and the Mm six-pack which i feel like i would need well wells doesn't yeah he's the bartender (laughs) bachelor in paradise he's not I mean, what I'm saying, though, is he was originally on the show. <laughs> but, yeah, no, you're right. Like, if I if I were cast on the show, like, I, I think working out has to be a part of your lifestyle. Like, you have to, like, I would have to probably lose 20 pounds and, like, be at the gym for three hours a day. Yes, you need and to do, like, the eating, two hours minimum cheat. a day in the gym. You got to yep. eat all the good foods. And I'm just, you like... You eat nothing but broccoli and chicken breast and yeah. brown rice. Yeah, and then rice you tell everybody when you eat a piece of bread and it's super annoying. Yeah. Cheat and- day! <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, so what's happening in your life? Okay, so so you haven't been dating still. No, and it feels so wonderful. Yeah, yeah, I've never seen you happier, to be honest. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, I feel good. Yeah, you f- you're like kind of radiating. I feel really good. Yeah, radiating? Sure. Okay. Yeah, not like radiation, <laughs> but like radiant. Is that what you're trying to yes, say? Yes. Yeah. Um, you're kind of like radioactive. <laughs> radioactive. Ooh, what song is that? Radioactive, radioactive. Oh yeah, it's like a rock band kind of. No, thing. no? I think it's like um, I don't know. Anyway, who cares? What's happening yeah. with you? Okay, so I have been dating a lot. Yes. <clears throat> and I've never seen you more unhappy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I'm exhausted. Yeah. I'm exhausted. I, yeah. I've been dating. It. I have been dating too much. I've been, you know, meeting too many people, doing too many Facetimes. I'm not connecting with the right people. I had a date yesterday. He's he's very nice. Um, he I I'm like ninety percent positive he's an avoidant attachment style. Nice guy though. He does want to see me again. I, I'm not opposed to meeting him again, but it wasn't like I think I'm. I think I'm really trying to change my uh, you know. Um, attraction compass and so I'm just Mm -hmm. really like when I see those things that come up with like different attachment styles or things that are said it's just kind of like ding 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 like different things going in my head of like ooh I don't know if that would work and that would work and that would work so I I may be overthinking it because I am still kind of recovering from being so hurt but um, I just I I, I don't know I'm not I'm not feeling like I need to throw in the towel and delete mm-hmm. the apps, sure. which I normally do. I'm yeah. so um, kind of like uh, compulsive about it. Yeah. Well, and that's like progress in a way that you're like, this isn't going well, but I'm able to sort of tolerate that and yeah. not have to be like, ah, like blow it all up. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think part of it is I missed that one guy that kind of pulled back from me, like, mm-hmm. you know, because that felt familiar, like mm-hmm. that experience with him. And I, I miss him still, and I kind of, you know, as I'm meeting these other guys, I'm like, well, they're not him, and I, I didn't, I don't feel the connection. Oh, wow. yeah. I don't feel the connection with them that I felt with him, and, um, you know, so then it makes me think, well, what if it could work? Maybe I should reach out and we could try again, and but then it's like, no, like I, I can't, I can't go back to that place of me pursuing and me being the one to pursue, and like mm-hmm. he made it clear, like he didn't think we would work out, and like that I'm not I can't there's nothing I can do about that mm-hmm. you know so um so yeah I don't know I, I just I'm kind of in the place where like I'm just feeling indifferent I'm not super excited when I set up a, a date to meet someone like here we go again kind of yeah a yeah. little bit which is like not the greatest energy to show up to on a date well. you know but, um, I've done that so many times where I'm like just mailing it and I'm like, I don't actually think this is going to go well. And then you show up and you're like, nope, didn't go yeah, well. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. like, why don't we listen to our gut more? That's interesting. Because I, I, I mean, I think I think part of it is it's okay to have the experience of it not going well. Or yeah. It's okay to have the experience of it of it being just okay. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that's like, you know, sometimes I go see a movie that I'm not like, I think this is going to be the most amazing movie. And then, and then you're like, that was fun. Yeah. You know? So, you know. I think 
think, you know, I think it'd be, I'm going to put this in the universe. Go. I would love to be with someone on my birthday. Oh. Because I want to be spoiled. Sure. And I like, I love my birthday. I love friends mm -hmm. getting together, doing the whole thing. When's your birthday again? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> October 15th. Everybody, I don't remember anybody. Everybody birthday. put it in your calendar and send me gifts. What does that make you, a Taurus? No, I'm what a Libra. A Libra, that's don't right. put me in the Taurus category. I don't know. No, I'm a Libra, um, October 15th. I love my birthday. I live up my birthday. I want to feel special. It's I all due to my mom. She made us mm -hmm. feel special all growing up. Our oh, birthdays was like our day. And we talked about on the show how I might have... You ruined my last birthday. Ruined my last birthday. <laughs> Yeah, so you'll have Which to I feel bad about, but not that you bad. Did, you didn't ruin I my know, birthday. I know, there was I know. a lot, you know, but it, but it, yeah, it didn't, it just didn't go the way that I had expected it to go, but yeah. it's fine. It'll be more fun this year. It'll be way more fun. Yeah. Less COVID restrictions. That's true. Well, well, by then, who knows? Boy, oh boy. It could get be vaccinated, everything. everybody. Yeah, please, please get vaccinated. Um, anyway, that's it. So, All right. yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Jamie. All right, guys, enjoy. All right. I am super excited to bring on our guest. He is the best dressed or was the best dressed and the hottest, both figuratively and literally <laughs> on F boy Island. Please welcome Jamie Wood. Thank you both for having me. I'm so excited to be on here and uh, yeah, hottest because I had a freaking blazer and, and like <laughs> full blown suit. Uh, in the Cayman Islands. So, yeah, I, I definitely was the hottest in that regard. You No, seriously, though, you you stood out for sure. And I want to get into, like, all things F-Boy Island because I'm obsessed. Okay. Um, but tell yep. us just tell us just a little bit about you. Like, what do you do? Um, where were you? Like, what were you doing? And where were you before even going on the show? Yeah, so I'm born and raised in Columbus, Ohio. Um, I've been here for, I'm 30 years old. I turned 30 actually on the show. So I, I hit Aww. 30, didn't really get to celebrate with my people, mm. um, especially because we didn't have devices. So I got to talk to my family for an hour and got to try to squeeze in all of my birthday calls. So I'm calling people for my birthday. Wow. Which is um, but uh, born and raised in Columbus, Ohio, I very big in like athletics, at least my background. Um, I played sports all the way up through college played football at ohio state um and oh i o i o <laughs> i'm glad someone knows that <laughs> it's just looking at you like, what, what the hell is he talking about <laughs> um, but yeah no so uh athlete i work in the athletic department now so i'm still kind of affiliated with sports um, i'm the oldest of six and uh wow. i've got a, a pretty big family i've got family in atlanta my mom and my stepdad live in atlanta my dad and my stepmom live here in ohio and so a uh, big family man love sports and love people oh i love that no doubt do you, you, I, have, I feel so, like you have something to say no well like I, so my question is like so like how did you even find out about the show and like what actually led you to want to apply for it well it actually came to me so i've been in this whole like idea of like I, I love the thought of it and I struggle with actually applying it, but don't chase attract mm -hmm. um, when it comes to dating, when it comes to job opportunities, when it comes to like anything in life. Um, I think like the, uh, for me, God has a way of bringing things to you when you're ready for them. And um, for me, I had gotten two calls from HBO, like casting agencies um that were they were casting for two shows one of them was like 12 dates of christmas um which i don't think was a very popular show and then obviously f boy island was the most recent one and it wasn't something i sought out it was something they they reached out to me on instagram through a dm and i'm thinking like this is like a joke this is spam this is somebody just like trolling me um or one of my like friends trolling me but uh come to find out it was F Boy Island. And I had no idea what the name of the show was. It was a dating show competition. And I think they threw out like the idea that it'll be in a warm, a warm climate. 
<laughs> all, that's all I had going into this is knowing that I'd be able to, to date women, compete, which like the athletic side of me was like, yeah. okay, I, I can do that. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know there was going to be 24 other guys or 26 other guys, which. Mm. And totally three women. Woman. Yeah, we can get into that later if you want. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just want to know where are my DM? Yeah, 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 like, like, yeah. Why isn't yeah. HBO reaching out for me? not sliding into me either. <laughs> hey, I, I don't know what it was. I guess I fit the demographic. I um, I, I obviously was cast as a nice guy. So the, no, the the idea of the show was 12 nice guys and 12 F boys, um, self-identified, um, have the opportunity to, you know, try to win the heart or win money uh, from this dating experiment. And, uh, yeah, so for me – at that phase or at that time in my life, I wasn't really looking for love. And I'm not really, again, I told you like the don't chase, don't, don't chase attract. I think in my past, when I've tried to chase after things, it either like, is just not really a genuine like experience or like it can kind of like run away from you. And so, mm. um, that was challenging for me because in this game, you all, you do have to like pursue, you do have to mm. like, try to you know win the woman over um but i think for me i went in there like i'm just gonna be me and if she's not with it then she's not with it and if she is then that's cool and so it was a good experience Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what can i ask you what so like when they were interviewing you or wondering if you're gonna come on the show like how did they ask you if you're a a fuck boy or a nice guy were they just like are you fucking women or are you actually like calling them back and courting them like how did that go so so for me i think it was kind of clear out the gate and i had just got out of a marriage mm. uh, i was married for five years so um and it was a faithful marriage and we ended amicably so like it wasn't i wasn't an f boy in marriage um mm-hmm. so I think with my posts, with like my presence on social media, it was pretty clear what bucket I fell in. So I don't think it was anything that they had to question. One thing that I think they did try to dig into is like my past um, because I was an athlete and, you know, there's stereotypes that I kind of played into as it relates to being a a big time athlete. And uh, so, yeah, I had some F boy ways in my past, but I'm, I am a nice guy. I would say maybe like a good guy. I like to say a good guy versus nice guy because I think mm-hmm. nice guys don't have – there's there's something tied to that too that mm-hmm. I don't think is very appealing. And it's something that I'm actually trying to learn to like work through. I, I think there's like a book called No More Mr. Nice Guy that I'm actually planning to start. It's just about the people-pleasing like man – that tries to like give everything to his woman and, you know, let her walk all over him and has no vision or no backbone for himself. And I think that is not what you want. But I think that's what people think about when they think of nice guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, we talk about that a lot. I, I, um, we talk about how the, the nice guy in the relationship ends up actually being quite resentful because Mm -hmm. he's not, he's putting all of his needs aside and just, doing what his partner wants because everybody knows him as the nice guy. And like in my last relationship, I ended up being the one to have to end it, even though he was the one pulling away because he just couldn't end it because that wouldn't be the nice thing to do. So Mm -hmm. even though like he should have like a long time before, you know? So, um, okay. So I want to talk a little bit like logistics of F boy Island. Okay. Let's do it. So you, you were the first guy that CJ like pulled aside, right? And CJ is one of the three girls, um, on the show. Okay. First of all, who were you like the most interested in? Like if CJ hadn't have pulled you aside, like who would you have wanted to talk to you first? I think CJ, CJ, I, I I like more the exotic, um, multi-ethnic multi-racial um that's that's more of like my preference at least initially Mm -hmm. um i I think nakia was beautiful as well the way that she came out like just her swagger her confidence um sarah is beautiful as well she 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 definitely was more reserved and Mm -hmm. and quiet 
Um, and you can tell she's like a Midwest girl. Um, yeah. CJ, CJ is definitely like used to being in the limelight. And you think, yeah. I think Kia, she knew what it was. She kind of like turned on the entertainer side of her um, mm-hmm. for that initial initial deal. But I would say CJ probably would have been, if I had my choice, CJ would have been the one. Okay. And I do want to say that Sarah was my least favorite for the first few episodes. And then she really grew on me. And did actually, she? I she did. And I actually really, like, I thought she, I thought all of the girls, I felt like, really grew, I like, agree. throughout the show, especially CJ. I think that yeah. she, like, I was so proud of her for her final choice. Um, anyway, we're going ahead. But anyway, I love the girls. I love them all. I'm yeah. super, like, for female empowerment, all of that. Um, okay. So CJ pulls you aside. And I'm thinking like, this guy is super hot. Like I'm rooting for you. I can tell, like, I could tell you're a nice guy. Mm -hmm. But at that point, we don't know, right? No, no one knows. They they wanted us, like, that was like a part of the agreement. Like you can't tell. Yeah. Except for Garrett. Everybody knew he was a (laughs) fuckboy. You said it. You said it. You can't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. But I guess you can judge a book by the content that they yes. provide, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So you have a conversation with CJ and she is self-proclaiming that she is like, watch this again, by the way. Yeah. Which by the way, can I jump in? Because like you ask great questions. Yes. I Super felt like you got, you her. got such a raw deal on this whole thing. <laughs> like you had, you had really like, well, okay, I want to go into detail. Okay. Okay. Ahead. Okay, so you're like, you're listening, you're giving her good eye contact, you're being a gentleman, you're not all over her, you're ask, like, you're responding to what she's saying. She's saying, I'm a brat, um, she's saying, I'm super high maintenance, like all this stuff. Dramatic. She, yeah, I'm dramatic. Yeah. And she, so she's self-proclaiming as these things, which is fine, you know, at least she knows it, you know, yes. but you're not, you're not like intimidated by it, you're kind of amused. And then you throw out the word toxicity, or you said something like, oh, so like a little toxicity. And she flips. <laughs> like, that was it. That was it. And like, that was like the last that you kind of got like a chance, at least from what we saw. I don't know. Like, tell us more. Like, how did that play out? But first, I want to say that I'm team you because I, I don't think what you said was that at all. I think everything she was saying I think she was being playful and flirty. I think you yeah. used it in a playful and flirty way. And she, it's really she, her she, loss because you seem like a great guy. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, this is all a game. This is all fun. So yeah. I didn't personal um, going into this. But yeah, so so I was chosen first. I felt great about that. That was exciting. Um, you know, sacrificing my, my well-being. And, you know, I was heavily hydrated with water because I had to wear that, da- that damn jacket. <laughs> <laughs> though I knew I, I kind of looking at everybody else and what they had on and, and just kind of understanding like beach attire. I'm like, man, I'm just going to come out with this. And it worked. It, it, it caught her eye initially. And I thought she was acting, to be honest. I mm-hmm. thought if she came out, gave the hug. It was a part of her like entrance that she wanted to add a little twist to it. She was the first one to come out. Um, but then she followed it up with the band. And, and mm-hmm. so that led me to believe like, okay, this might be, she might really be intrigued. Mm-hmm. And so going into that evening, you know, all the guys are like patting me on my back, like, you know, they're jealous, but also like happy for me. Yeah, of course. Uh, but, and I'm feeling good. I'm on cloud nine, but then come back for the date night or for the evening I actually was the third person to talk to her. So the way that they portrayed it um, is that I was like the second person after Peter got pterodactyl. Yeah. Um, which is hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I was the <laughs> person. But what really went down is I was actually the third person to talk with her. Um, Casey and her had the second interaction. Oh. And I actually stepped, I went to Casey and was like, hey, bro, like you've had a decent amount of time. Can I, can I sit and spend some time with her? And so that's how that happened. Um, and then that whole interaction was not, it didn't play out that way. We talked mm. for about six minutes, seven minutes. Um, and it was a lot more than that. And I did not come in like, tell me about your life. 
tell me about like that wasn't how I led into the conversation. We had small talk first, which mm-hmm. it's not far fetched for me to kind of go deep out the, out the gate. Like so, that wasn't like the people that know me know, like think that that was real. But it, I really like talked to her first. But then, yes, the comments that she made, I did not call her toxic, which I think right. that's what we thought. I right. said, like, yeah, what you were saying it leads me to believe there's a little toxicity there. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, like you said, I I don't think I was wrong in identifying that. I think if I could do it again, I would maybe, I would maybe use a different word or just joke around it before, you know, this is our first interaction. So throwing out that word can trigger someone. And I think that's what we saw at least portrayed on TV. And I think she did uh, latch on to the idea that I called her toxic, Mm -hmm. but I didn't explain myself and explain what I meant by toxic or toxicity, um, Mm -hmm. you know, off camera when you guys didn't see it. Well, and and interesting in the edit that we see as viewers, like it's really chopped up. It's like, it gives like your conversation and then it cuts right to an interview of her talking to the camera being like, called me toxic, like blah, blah. So like, yeah, (laughs) yeah. Well, and so like, I'm curious. I mean, first of all, like I appreciate you giving the bigger context, even, even the way they cut it, it didn't yeah. feel like, wow, this dude is like going in with like super deep com like, you know, like e- even if you had led with that, like it felt like a, a good, but substantive, yeah. like, like get right. to know you kind of opener. So we would have liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's our brand. Like, yeah, we like, like deep. Yeah. Let's get bone. Yeah. Let's go. But like in that moment when you said toxicity, did she, because we don't actually really see her immediate reaction. Like, did it feel like it grinded to a halt and you were like, oh no, like I've really offended her or did it just keep rolling? Like the conversation. It kept kept going. And honestly, I did not remember. So, so (laughs) I didn't think it went wrong, went bad because we continued that conversation. Mm. So that whole toxicity piece, it didn't come to like, it didn't, I wasn't reminded about it until the next day when like she came back to me and like pulled me aside and said, like, I didn't appreciate you calling me toxic. So like this was in front of cameras that they didn't oh, show. We had another okay. like interaction day two. But I think with me going out episode three, it it, it was a storyline that they didn't want to run with. Like it, mm-hmm. it just in my perception of what production is, they had 24 men that they had to like kind of weave these stories in and out of. Me going out early, it didn't make sense to provide that context. Sure. So, sure. Um, yeah, but like we had a talk, and I, I told her, I was like, I was like, I, I don't know if I want to ex- apologize for what I said. Like, I, I don't think I was wrong for what I said. I was like, but what I can, st- what I can do for you is I can make sure I'm more mindful about the words that I use. Um, you know, if I. I could, I could have, I definitely could have stayed away from saying toxicity, but in no way was I trying to label you as toxic. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it kind of threw me off guard that that was something that she latched onto because I totally forgot. And I think because I was so nervous and so in the moment, this is our first time, like cameras in your face, dating and talking, um, that it kind of threw me off, but I got out of that. So that really wasn't the reason I got out. Oh, really? Okay. So you guys talked she said you called me this so this was before elimination because she did bring up at elimination too right yeah that's why i got called up yeah uh, okay so you got called up and then so that was when she um called you out for it or did you guys have a side conversation before yeah, that? we had a side conversation so each episode was three days so uh day one was the date when we first met we, we had the pool party Day two, we it was uh, I think it was the day she went on a date with Mark, I believe, or I, I don't know. There was something else, yeah. So like, but anyhow, yeah. So so she she called that out, but then when we had elimination, that's when she like doubled down on it. Like I thought we had, I thought it was bridge, un- it was water under the bridge. I thought we were good, but then she called me up at elimination to bring it up in front of everybody when me and Peter were standing next to each other. And obviously I'm confident thinking like Peter got pterodactyl. I didn't. So I think I'm good, which I was, but I had, I explained what I meant by toxic and and actually what toxicity means to me. And I I think what I said was that toxic is, is really like pain. It's like, 
it's like venom. It's like pain leaving someone and it's experienced by other people in various ways. And so for me, you know, I, we all have toxic traits. And I think that's what we that's what I kind of alluded to is like it takes toxic to know toxic. I, I can identify it because I have I have some toxic ways about me. Um, but in no way does that make me think any less of you or, or think any, you know, think of you in any type of way. And so I just left it at that and I end up making it through the first round. So, yeah, well, she clearly had she clearly had a reaction based off something else that has previously happened, yep. like whether she was called toxic by an ex or a friendship or something like that, like because to have that significant of a reaction based off something that wasn't even like you weren't calling her toxic, mm. you know? So there was like something else there that just had nothing to do with you. Most, most definitely. I mean, and that's always how it is, right? In relationships. Yeah. We, always, we, we tend to bring bring our past and bring our baggage with us. And I think I hit a, a, a sore spot for her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and to me, I mean, it also makes me think like, there's so many of these sort of like buzzwords in our culture right now that carry so much weight for people like, like on our last episode, right, we were talking about like the word gaslighting and mm-hmm. like, you know, that getting thrown around and like, and like mm-hmm. literally for words like toxic and gaslighting, like you could ask five different people for the definition and get five different definitions, mm-hmm. right? Oh and like, God. yeah, you know, love and like, bombing, love yeah, bombing love bombing, huge, right? Yeah. And like all of these things, like, but there's, go ahead, Jamie. What'd you say? They're peacocking. Oh, yeah, peacocking. Peacocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, but, but I think these things, like, people are, they feel so um, like highly charged to people that they, you know, like, Mm -hmm. and and I think when you're in a situation that, you know, is being broadcast, I think that makes people even more like, like hyper, hyper defensive to them and stuff like that. But definitely. I agree with you. But like, but like hearing your explanation, Jamie, like that's totally, you know, like I, I feel like that is the mark of someone who is, interested and ready for a mature relationship to, to, you know, to be able to say like, yeah, like I've got my own baggage and like I do, I have done and do still react in ways that I'm not proud of. Right. That, uh, that aren't, I, I don't always put my best foot forward 24 seven in relationships. And like, that's all of us. And mm-hmm. like, you know, like, like, yeah, like there's no, there's no shame in that. There's no judgment, like whatever. No, and that that's that's kind of how I was approaching it. Um, it's like a, it doesn't make you any worse of a person. I just it, it's just you showed you showed who you were, or at least a, a side of who you are through what you shared with me, and I labeled it as such. Uh, mm-hmm. And so I think being seen sometimes is scary for people, especially out the gate like that. I mean, that was so early, and so uh, you know that was our first interaction and I'm like, Oh, okay. So I see, I see, I see some sides of you, Mm -hmm. Um, but I was, I was willing to get to know her more. mm -hmm. That that was actually going to be my question is like, did that sort of turn you off to CJ or were you still like, or or were you like, Oh, like, let me pursue maybe getting to know the other women. Uh, I think definitely a red flag. I think I, I was definitely thinking that, but the, the, the weird part is like, this was competition but for me, I also like care about people. So I don't like sure. treat people as a game. So, yeah. um, but then I also understand, like, again, back to understanding how I have ways about myself that people are going to have to either accept or choose not to accept. And, and like, I was willing to, to play the game on one, at, on one hand, but I also was willing to get to know her better because I know those ways and those tendencies and those traits come from experiences that we've had in the past. So like, I think it's just a part of relationship. And so I, I think I would be willing to tolerate that up to a certain point to where maybe my boundaries or, or my character or whatever was, you know, but again, it's a game show. I was out there just to have an experience and uh, I wasn't necessarily like, all right, I'm done talking to you. Mm -hmm. That wasn't, that wasn't my mindset. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think, you know, it's interesting, like, because you were going to give her a second chance, but then she didn't want to give you a second chance, but you came off so much better. (laughs) (laughs) You know, like, I think, I think the girls and, and we got this a lot, like from things that those say, say what they would say specifically CJ and Nakia, but 
they're like, this is my time. This is about me. Like the guys need to chase us and blah, 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 blah. But like, really it's, it's about both people. Our time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I am curious. Um, so why did you then get voted off? Um, yeah. So what you see on the show is that, you know, we do our photo shoot. We do what else, but what you see in elimination is in the Kia votes me off, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I was like so confused. There's no context to it, which I was confused about. I don't know why they didn't add a little bit. But what she said was like, I just, I know you're a nice guy. Like she said that. And then she said, um, I just don't think you're ready for this or ready for a relationship. And so what happened is episode two, I'm, I'm fresh out of a divorce. So like July of 2020, not fresh out. It's probably it's pretty relevant um, in my dating life. Uh, July of 2020, I finalized my divorce after five years. Um, I got married pretty young, so like this was a big phase of my life that came to a close. And you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time during quarantine. So like me and my ex wife were quarantined together back in March, right after signing our papers. So like. Wow. We're still in the oh same, my gosh! We're still in the same house. Um, spent a final, our final week together uh, after signing papers in quarantine, and it was it was actually kind of like bittersweet. Um, mm. We we really like I mean, we're super present. There was nothing else we could do. Um, there was snow plus quarantine, so um, we were like snowed in together. It was pretty dope, man. And um, you know, that last week was our last time together for, for a good amount of time. And then I moved out um, and we end up selling our house, whatever, whatever. Um, and, and then this comes along January of the following year um, or yeah, January or February of the following year. And so I throughout that time after being divorced or after signing our papers and being done, I didn't date like I ch- took some time for myself um, therapy, journaling, a lot of self-care and kind of learning myself. Um, like we talked about earlier, the nice guy forfeiting all of who he is, what he cares about. Um, I, I really played into that. Um, and I think ultimately once it was over with, it's like, now you look around like, damn, what did I do? Like I'm overweight, (laughs) which I was, um, I, my relationships with my people that are you know, most important to me and closest to me. They're not there. My ex-wife's gone. Like, so I had a real humbling experience um, throughout the time after divorce, post-divorce. And then this comes along and I'm kind of like, shit, like, I don't know if I'm ready for this, but I'm also at a place to where I'm like, man, I want to just go experience. Like I'm, I'm tired of playing it safe. I'm tired of like living this like linear life where like my life has kind of been mapped out for me, um, you know, with sports and everything. But like this experience was totally off of my radar and and I'm glad I did it because it took me out of my comfort zone. But I don't know if I really was ready for all that this game presented. Um, So I I think it was a a blessing in disguise, to be honest. And what happened is that I end up like divulging some more, that information in a, in a setting that probably wasn't the best for the two other girls. So it was around, it was with the guys. We're all talking and we're talking about relationships and past relationships and history. And, you know, I'm kind of, I'm an open guy, so I'm sharing a lot. And then the two, the two girls, Sarah and Nakia come walking up to our like hub area and they get kind of like thrown into this conversation. Mm. And so this is really like my first interaction with them. And it's like, damn, like this dude is sharing a lot early. And so I think I've heard from them, like they almost like that's con- that can kind of be a red flag too. If, if somebody's sure. like over sure. sharing. Yeah. Um, and I think for me, I, there was alcohol involved and uh, just the emotions tied into like the situation. But I think what she interpreted from that and the key is that I'm not ready. I'm not healed. And yeah, the, the guy's still stuck in, in his old relationship. And I don't think I was that. But I, again, I told her, I was like, this is, if this is your interpretation or if this is your perspective of where I'm at in my healing journey, 
you have every right to have that. Only I know the work that I've done and the work that I've continued to do to heal and to kind of move forward as the, as I want to, um, you know, as days go on. So, mm-hmm. wow, that was so beautiful. Yeah. Like, and I mean, it almost sounds like she was like, like protecting you or like taking care of you in a way. I think you can look at it that way. I, I guess in the moment, I, I didn't view it as such. I'm like, damn, like I, I felt like I had to, I had to, I felt threatened. I felt like I had to defend myself. And I think that was like, like reflecting on it. That's not the, the approach I wanted. I don't, there's nothing to defend. If there's, if there's no threat, there's nothing to defend. And so, um, but I, I definitely can, I, I didn't think of it that way. She probably was trying to protect me. Yeah, but I bet no. And I mean, like, I would have felt the same way in that moment as, as you did, right? Like, it still feels like rejection. Like, it's still, you know, there's still that, like, competition, right? It's a game show, like you're well, saying. And like, and, like, we are the ones that get to decide if we're ready or not. So, like, to yeah. have to say, have someone that's say true. that to you, like, it takes away your power a little bit. Yeah, like, yeah, well, wait true. a second. Like, I am the one that gets to decide that, you know? Um, But, you know, I I really appreciate you sharing your story of, like, your marriage and your divorce and what you went through and, like, this road to, like, healing and um, that, you know, F-Boy Island just happened to be part of that road, you know, that is now probably going to open up so many other potential possibilities or or not. I don't know. I mean, but it's just, I don't know. Well, and I think like that was something I was wanting to ask you about too, Jamie, is like, you know, on your Instagram and other stuff that's out there, you know, with you like representing yourself, you know, you talk about like being an advocate for like mental health and, and, you know, you talk about, I think like there was some promo thing for the show where you talk about like, I'm really interested in like, what is people's relationship with themselves? And I'm wondering Mm -hmm. if you can talk about, you know, because obviously like you're not just a a reality show person like so i wonder if you can talk about like that aspect of uh, of of you and kind of what you're hoping to do like moving forward yeah no definitely i I think um for me just the whole idea of like mental health uh is is uh something i was aware of but not something that i i would say subscribe to uh up until recent um in my marriage we did do some counseling Um, but what happened after marriage is I really went for myself. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, my view of like therapy and my view of like counseling is like, it's really just somebody holding a mirror, um, so that you can look into yourself and you can ask yourself or they can ask you questions that you don't ask yourself, um, so that you can better understand and have alternative perspectives of how to view the various things that happen in life or have happened to you in life. Um, And so for me, what I hope to do is just to normalize these conversations uh, really amongst men. Uh, I think, you know, we talk about and I think we talked about it a lot off camera, which I wish they would have shown more of this, but like safe spaces Mm -hmm. for men. You know, we were all going through this unique experience. Majority of our time was with the guys. Um, I I always wish like they would have had like timers Mm -hmm. for like, to, to time how much time we actually have with the women, because I, I bet like, you know, we got OG Jared saying, I love you. And he only probably spent shit, uh, five hours with this girl, you know, I and know. So, like, it's just like most of our time was with the guys. And I think we were able to have some very great conversations around what it means to, you know, value yourself, what it means to value people, um, and I think for me, a lot of my life has been about achieving and ex- external validation and like going out and, you know, reaching the highest echelon in like sports and your career. And like, that's what a lot of men attribute success to. And I think what I'm learning now is like, there's a whole different side of this where like your inner being and like what's going on inside is probably is way more important than what you achieve outside. And I I don't like to compare them, but you know, if you can be winning out here and and be all torn up inside and, and, you know, you have terrible at home, terrible with your friends, but you're making millions of dollars. And like, you see very successful people in the world's eyes that are suicidal. Um, And so Mm -hmm. I think that's where a lot of my like mental health piece comes in is like, I have, been successful but i've also been miserable in my success Mm -hmm. um and i've noticed like 
there's got there's more there's more to it than that. Mm. And there's your podcast right there. There it is. <laughs> yeah, listen, man, bring us on. We're, 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 we are here for it. Well, I don't know what I would contribute. <laughs> well, I mean, but you can contribute a woman's perspective. Yeah, yeah, it's for everyone. And I think, you know, for me going into marriage, I didn't know myself. I think I identify as an athlete so much that, you know, every other aspect of me was like, not important, or at least I didn't like see that as a, a big part of me. And then once, once I got injured and lost sports, I'm trying to figure out this next phase of like, how do I find meaning? And that's kind of where marriage came in. It was the next right thing to do in my eyes. Um, and then, you know, I kind of lose myself in that. And so it's really, my journey is like self-discovery, um, learning like what I care about, what I desire and what I want and being okay with like having those wants and those desires. And then also understanding that I can build the life that I want, um, through, you know, you know, just being me, um, and accepting all of who I am. That's beautiful. Um, so I have, are you okay if we go transition a little lighthearted yeah, to like some show it. questions? Let's do it. Okay. So when, so for those who haven't watched it yet, and obviously there's going to be like so many spoilers here. So that's on you at this point. Yeah. In the turn off the show <laughs> if you don't want to have the ending spoiled. Okay. Yeah. Um, the show is out. So go check it out on HBO Max. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Pausing right here. Go watch it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so at elimination, when you get eliminated, the guy has to say whether he's a nice guy or a fuck boy. Yeah. And um, and the fuck boys get sent to um, limbo, 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 where they are, they're like like in like a hut, basically like this large hut. They're sleeping on cots. It's outside. They're pretending like they have to make their own food. I don't know. I kind of want to ask about that. And then the nice guys get sent to like a grotto, right? Like a nice guy grotto. The castle. We called it the castle. The yeah. castle. The grotto. What was it like in the grotto? The grotto was great. So like, it's a real property in the Caymans. And I think it's owned by some very wealthy politician. Um, the fan, It's like a big family home, but it was, it was decked out. I mean, we... We, I had my own king bed, uh, you know, being one of the early ones, there were some privileges like that came with the <laughs> room. And then there's this like spiral staircase at Garrett Powers. He had like this whole upstairs oh my gosh. view of like the beach. Um, so like, it was nice. It was decked out. Uh, the groceries that I like, provided us, you know, grocery run runs once a week. And so, but what happened is as the house started to fill up, it started to turn into like a frat house. And I never lived in a frat house. And I'm glad I never had that experience because, I mean, you just got guys with all from all different walks of life that, shit, you got people putting their feet on the counter. You got people, you know, not cleaning up their dishes. It just was yeah. like, for me, I, I don't know if it's like, just how I was raised, but I, I found myself being like the dad there. Um, and they like guys would jokingly call me like dad because I'm like, bro, I'm not cleaning up after you. <laughs> <laughs> you the same. Yeah, you, you can do this too. And so um, it was fun though. It was fun. It was cool to like get away from the, the stress of the game. And I think that's what you saw later on, at least hearing from guys that got out later is like, it's the game was stressful. So like mm -hmm. coming here is like a, a sigh of relief um, to be able to like kind of, you know, I'd say let my hair down, but I don't have any hair. <laughs> um, <let> hair down. <laughs> what was the timeline of like the amount of time that you were in the game and the, the amount of time that you were in the grotto? So if the show, the show was six weeks of shooting, eight weeks total, two weeks quarantine, six weeks of shooting. Uh, each episode was three days, so three days on, one day off, three days on, one day off. That's eight, so probably 12 day, about 12 days there, so that's what, three weeks? Or no, like that's like two weeks. Mm -hmm. So shit, probably like four weeks in that in the grotto, about wow. four weeks. Wow, did you yeah. start to go crazy? 
Well, we had YouTube in the grotto, like before we had nothing. They took all our devices, they took our phones, we took took our Apple watches. Wow! We're like going there, we we got to watch YouTube, so or YouTube, and then we got to like watch Netflix, and okay. so we watched probably every ep- every episode of every reality TV show on Netflix because we were still kind of in that mode. But mm-hmm. yeah, it was it was cool. Fun. And then what was, so the Limbro guys, like, were they like, they weren't dead? actually sleeping out there. Like, right? were they actually sleeping out there? Like, where were they eating? I don't know. I I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> no, no. Um, I can't, I don't know if I can talk about that. Really? Oh, that's okay. That's oh. okay. We, we don't want you to get in trouble with uh, Netflix. I was, you know. Because I wasn't an F boy. So that's the, the good, the good thing about being a, a nice guy. You don't have to worry about Limbro. You don't have to live there, but the skits were hilarious. Oh, they're uh, so uh, funny. Yeah, they're funny. They could, that could be its own show. Honestly, I, I would show more Grotto and Limbro stuff. Because I, I completely they agree. a good twist to, to the show. Yes, I completely agree. Nikki was so funny. And, okay. and I mean, the truth is, is like the, the interactions with the guys, like that's kind of what you want to see anyway, because – the chase and what happens with the girls, it just kind of is the same thing. It's like the same guys are fucking up and the same girls are choosing the wrong guy. And it's like, you know, you just get tired of that. And then like, it was such like so much brevity, like right. watching this other thing. That was so funny. Yeah, it was, it was and I, like for us at the grotto, at least this is my experience. It was hard to find like humorous things to do as a nice guy. Um, like I almost rather have been like a F boy to go do what they did and like joke the way they did. Like they had us, mm-hmm. like, you know, I read all of her texts and, you know, I, I, I have my read receipts on and, mm-hmm. you know, I open the door for like, it was just hard to joke around being a nice guy mm-hmm. where like being an F boy and going through F boy rehab. Yeah. Like, I, I, so I've got funny. all things that I could tie into that. Um, but yeah, yeah it was fun. Were there any guys, like, were you surprised by who was a nice guy and who was an F-boy? Uh, I would say Charlie. <laughs> I would say Charlie. Charlie. Um, my my guy, Charlie, the, the guy from France. Yeah, the guy that was like, I'm a nice guy, but then the producers were like, no, he's an F-boy. <laughs> yeah. That, that whole <laughs> deal, that was not played up the way, the way it was experienced. Those whole eliminations were very, like... Cause guys are spilling their guts to try to like tell yeah. and you can tell like some of these guys don't talk. They don't express themselves in this way. So I felt confident. You could tell like Josh was very confident in that setting, but like other guys, like this was very nerve wracking for them. And so Charlie was one because he was my roommate. Um, and he has like this very strict routine of like just healthy living and, you know, meditation and eating right. And he's like probably the most in shape guy I've ever met. But I guess the way that he was casted, he was the F boy. And, and I didn't know that. So I, my room was Tariq, Tariq Johnson, the big tall guy with the tattoos, um, Peter, my guy, Pete and Charlie and myself. So that was my bunk, uh, in the cottages is us four. Mm-hmm. But Char- and like, we never really asked each other, what are you? It was more so like we were just just living and then to come to find out, oh, he really was an F boy. So I felt kind of like, damn, like I didn't even know that. I wish you would have told me, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was I know I wanna I wanna wrap this up because I know you have stuff to do. Um, but last yeah. last like show question. What mm-hmm. was the men tell all like? Or not the what is it, the mansplaining? Is that the what they man- called it? Yes, yes. Yeah. What was that like? Like, oh, I guess, like, who were you rooting for? Like, who did you want each of the girls to pick? And let's just start with that. Um, so the mansplain going into that, we we kind of had an idea that there was gonna be some type of reunion while there, and uh we didn't know what it was gonna be like. And so, you know, we do the mansplaining shoot. And we all get dressed up again. We all come back. And, you know, there's guys talking, guys that are eliminated. They're a little bitter, a little hurt. They're definitely a lot more invested in the show because they were recent eliminations. And so, like, you see and hear those guys tell it how it is, how they, you know, how they wanted to tell. And and I think, um, like, guys like Colin, guys like Greg, they – 
you know, they were there. And so there was so much more talked about at the mansplain that they did a lot of cutting up. Mm -hmm. Um, But even myself, like CJ made mention, you know, how I might have been somebody that she wanted to, she wished she had given another chance or given more time. Yeah. Um, And I I talked, (laughs) you know, and she, I kind of like played it like, nah, you didn't save me. Like I kind of played it a little bitter. Like I was salty about it, mm-hmm. which I wish I, I wish I had more chance, but it's all good. Um, but what, what I explained and kind of my notion and, and I, I don't want to make the decision for the girls. Like, I'm not going to tell you who to pick because that same person that I tell you to pick could turn around tomorrow and break your heart. Like that, that's uh, my thing was like, just, I think if you ladies understood like your value, who you are, um, you know, what you stand for and, and, and what you should tolerate based off of your internal, you know, measures, like you'll know who you should decide. And so if you are still trying to figure it out and you still, you're just out down for adventure, Sarah, then okay. Choose who you want to choose based off of that. Yeah. If you want some stability, you want somebody that's predictable in a in a good way that you know what to expect, and he's not going to throw you curveballs in a um, in an f boy way. Then you know who to pick, Sarah. Um, <laughs> and, and so, like, <laughs> I think it's really up to like them. And, and that's what I tried to say when I had my opportunity to share is like, if you ladies knew how valuable you were, you knew the love that you need to give yourself in order to be able to make decisions that best uh, align with how you value you, then you'll know who to choose and who, who can compliment you in that. And I think um, what I see in a lot of women is they don't understand. And so they often try to fill a void or they try to, you know, you know, think what, but think in the moment rather than like who's best for me and what's best for me um, in the long run with what I want in our relationship or in a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really well said. And I, you know, it's something that I'm personally, am like, you know, really trying to like think about too, because I think it's, I think we get, and I, this would be an F boy thing too, but I think as, as people who are dating single people, like you get attracted to the fun and the excitement and the unknown and unpredictability, but ultimately like that leads to heartbreak. You know, Um, and I did listen to Sarah's interview with Reality Steve on his podcast. Um, And I like understand, you know, like, obviously, she's probably getting a lot of flack about picking Garrett. Um, But ultimately, like, he didn't win anything. Like, you know, like he he didn't get the money. And she's really happy that it's going to a charity. And she's able to kind of be like, yeah, I made this mistake. Like, ladies, like, don't do this. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but what do you think of Garrett? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'll say I didn't get much time with him. Um, in the time that I've had with him post show and whatnot, he's a solid dude. He, he, what I see in him is some things I've seen in myself a, a person that places a lot of worth and value in like their reputation and living up to this image and this persona, um, wearing these clothes, you know, having this money and the, the clout that comes around uh, along with some of the stuff that we've experienced now, um, it means something to him. And so, I I see a I see a, a good man or a man that can can that is a good man, but that has some areas to grow, just like all of us. And so, um, I don't know how much of Garrett was acting or like how, how much mm. of this was his persona that he was trying to, or he is trying to live up to um, as much as like, this is who he truly is. And so that's the, that's my take on Garrett. Um, it's like, man, he's, he's kind of like in this reality world now and uh, it can take you all types of places. And so I'm curious where, where it'll take him. Yeah. Hopefully like a nicer place. <laughs> I, I think I think he I think he'll learn and grow from this. Um, I don't think any experience is wasted. I think if he takes some time to reflect and, and really like, man, how, is this who I want to be and is this what I want to do for the rest of my life? And I think at some point we all grow up and mature. Like I, I mean, I was 
I was an F boy probably in my younger years. So like I, I get it. And and every day, like every man has a choice to make to wake up and be who they want to be, whether it's an F boy or a nice guy or a better man. Like it's up to the man or the person to make that choice and make that decision. Mm-hmm. <gasps> who are that. you going to keep in touch with from the show? So we have a uh, like a giant group chat. So we all kind of talk and throw jabs here and there and try to support each other in our different ventures. Uh, as far as like who I'm closest to, uh, I would say I've grown closest to, to Peter, um, Peter Park. Um, oh, cool. Josh is my guy. Me and Josh are very similar in a lot of ways. Um, he did an awesome job on the show. Josh was amazing. Um, yeah. yeah he, he's He's a he's a heartthrob. The ladies love him. He's he's gonna be a good husband one day, I'm sure. Um, I would say, uh, who else? Sean is a, is a, a great guy. He's, love he's Sean. Quiet, he's super good. nice. Yes, yeah. but like a lot of us, a lot of us have connected. Man, we've gone through this experience together. It's super unique. It's the first time show, so there will be the first forever. Um, yeah. to experience F boy Island. And so I think off of that, there's a, there's an element of brotherhood that's definitely formed. Definitely. Well, this has been so fun. Thank you so much for your time. Um, where can our listeners find you? And, um, what are you, I guess, what kind of projects can they yeah, support? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. All for sure. Stuff. For sure. Thank you for the platform. I, I would say, um, my, Probably most active right now is on Instagram. Um, and my Instagram handle is Jamie Wood, no S. So Jamie Wood official. Um, it's on IG. I also have a Twitter. It's uh, I am Jamie Wood on Twitter. But I'm, I'm really like building uh, some other things. I like to write. I like to uh, I'm pretty like a deep thinker. And I would say an intellectual person. Um, so. I, I really like to put thought into things. And so podcast, blogging, I'm also starting like a food page um, because I love, to, I love to eat and that's like where a majority of my money goes. So like, I'm hoping to grow it to where I can go places to eat for, for free, free. <laughs> <laughs> or to pay to eat. Um, but it's uh, would you eat it? So like a play on my last name. Oh, W-O-T. that's cool. I like that. You eat it. Um, and so I haven't launched that yet, but those are some things I'm working on along with the podcast and like the blog. So also, is it ironic that your last name is Wood? Why? Why you say that? <laughs> <laughs> are you making like like a boner joke yeah okay yeah, just, check it. just check it oh my good i didn't know we were going there but <laughs> we, we, we can go there if we want <laughs> oh man all right jamie well thank you so much um and uh we just really appreciate you coming on all right thank you for having me i hope y'all have a, a good one and i look forward to listening to you uh going forward Boom. Yes. Wow. Jamie, you're awesome. Like, really, um, really good dude. And I feel like he talked about this, but he's not like a reality show star. No, he's just a normal person. But I'm excited to see what he does next. Like, I think he'll do cool stuff with his platform around, like, wellness and mental health and, like... And, like, like normalizing that within men. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so go follow him at... Jamie, Jamie Wood, Wood official. official. Um, and then watch FBoy Allen on HBO Max. Um, and guys, follow us on Instagram at hello and goodbye podcast at underscore Lena Joan at the real Jared Rodriguez. All of the stuff on our website, www.hello and goodbye podcast.com. So you got our Patreon, all of our sponsors, um, links to our social media, yep. everything you can think of. And then rate and review and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. And tell a friend. Tell a friend. All right. We love you guys. Yeah, love you. Bye. Bye.